It can be fun to browse around and look at houses whether or not you're actually in the market to buy one. But if you are at all seriously thinking about buying a home, it's really important to figure out how much you can afford. I mean, it's great to ogle mansions, but before you get invested in a fantasy, you wanna make sure that you can pay for it. There's also the chance that you're lowballing yourself and you could actually afford more than you think, but you're not gonna know until you run some numbers. So today, let's talk about how to find out how much house you can afford. It's tempting to think in terms of big round numbers like, oh, I'm gonna buy a $300,000 house or a $400,000 house. But realistically, you're probably going to be looking at a range of houses that you can afford. And it makes the most sense to start from your actual finances rather than just picking a number and then trying to work backwards and figure out how are you gonna be able to make that happen. Another thing that you definitely don't wanna do is just go to a loan officer and have them figure it out. A loan officer can tell you how much you might be able to borrow, but how much you might be able to borrow and how much you can afford could be two very different things. So let's talk about some different ways that you can budget in order to buy a home and see how much you can afford. A really, really simple one about as broad as you can get is that your cost of your home should be about three times the cost of your annual household income. And that is before taxes, so your gross income. But that's a very, very rough estimate, right? It includes your income and nothing else. So let's get a little bit more specific. A popular way of budgeting for a home is to use the 2836 rule. In this case, you don't wanna spend more than 28% of your monthly gross, again, that's pre-tax income, on your home, and you don't wanna spend more than 36% of that gross income on all of your debts, and that includes the cost of your housing. So let's take a look at an example of how that can work. Let's say your gross income is $5,500 a month and you have $500 in existing monthly debt payments. With those numbers, your monthly mortgage payment shouldn't exceed $1,480. How do we get that? Well, 36% of $5,500 is $1,980, but then we have to subtract that $500 for the other debts, leaving us with $1,480. Using the 2836 rule is kind of a lot of math, but at the same time, it doesn't actually take that many variables into account. And there are a lot of things that you should be considering when you're trying to budget for how much home you can afford. One thing you can do to get a more nuanced estimate is head online to nerdwallet.com and use our home affordability calculator. First, you're gonna enter where you're hoping to buy a home. After all, it's real estate, so it's all about location. Next, enter your annual household income before taxes. Again, that's your gross income. And include everyone who might be paying the mortgage in this amount. So if you're buying a home with your partner, put both of your incomes together. Type in the amount you're hoping to save for a down payment. And don't worry if you don't know what that is. You can play around with a calculator and change this number later. Next, put in a ballpark estimate of your monthly debt. This includes things like car or student loan payments, as well as credit card payments. And last, estimate your credit score. If you're not sure where you stand, you can check that on NerdWallet too. And there we have it. Now you can adjust these different numbers up and down to see, for example, how a bigger down payment or you know, paying off a loan and changing your debt load might affect what you can afford. You can also slide this monthly payment up or down to see how much you could stretch your budget or economize. When you're adjusting these numbers up and down and trying to think of different scenarios, consider what your life might be like one, three, or five years from now. You know, if you're thinking about stretching your budget a little bit, would it be a brief stretch or would this be a sort of life change and how things are just going to be? So let's say, for example, you're expecting to advance in your career. That means that your income is probably going to go up. So a mortgage payment that is a little bit of a stretch right now might become easier with time. On the other hand, say you're planning to have children, that's gonna be fun, but it's also gonna come with a bunch of new expenses. And so a mortgage payment that's affordable now might be a little bit less so when you've got a couple of little ones in your budget. You can also fine tune the numbers here by adding in things like HOA fees, property taxes, and other home ownership expenses to give yourself as comprehensive a picture as possible of what it's going to look like for you to be able to afford your lifestyle as a homeowner. You really wanna be comprehensive because this is your whole life, not just your housing payment. And so you're gonna to wanna to think about a budget. If you don't already have a household budget, there's no time like the present to go ahead and make one, especially now that you have an idea of what kind of housing costs you're going to be looking at. Some of your bills are gonna stay the same. Getting internet for a house costs just as much as getting internet for a studio apartment, but some of your bills are going to change. 
heating and cooling a house is probably a lot more than doing the same for that little apartment. And then there could just be other expenses that you maybe didn't have before. Say when you were renting, maybe one of your utilities like water was included or trash and recycling pickups, stuff like that. So if those are gonna be new expenses, you're gonna to wanna to consider them in your budget. You also might wanna set aside an emergency fund that's just for your house. It's great if you have a rainy day fund, but a lot of stuff can happen with houses, even if it is brand new construction. So if you can fit it in your budget to set a little bit extra aside for your house, that would be great. And it doesn't have to be a ton. $20 a month, $50 a month can make a really big difference. And that way, if something catastrophic happens that needs to get dealt with right away, like say your water heater goes out, you can just take care of it with that house emergency fund right away and you didn't even need to touch your normal rainy day fund. You could get a home warranty, but if you're gonna go ahead and do that, make sure that you read the fine print. A lot of times there can be issues with what's covered and what's not covered. And there also can be little glitchy things with stuff like replacements. So say for example, you've got a kitchen with tons of beautiful stainless steel appliances, but then the fridge dies. Your home warranty company might send you a brand new fridge that's white because they just need to replace the fridge. They don't have to give you a one-to-one -one replacement. Something that you might consider doing rather than getting a home warranty is taking that couple hundred dollars that you would have spent on the home warranty and putting it into a savings account and using that to start your house's emergency fund. Figuring out how much home you can afford really comes down to a ton of math. And there are a lot of variables that are gonna go into figuring out you know, what your range is, what that scale of houses is that you can afford. And you are gonna to wanna to think about it in terms of your current situation and in terms of your future. I can tell you personally, that's worth doing. When I bought my house, I was very anxious about the future. And so if anything, I underbought. If I'd been thinking a little bit more clearly, I think I might have made some different decisions. So it's worth considering these different scenarios because you don't really know what way your life could go. Things could get worse, things could get better, but you need to kind of think it through, look at what kind of range you're gonna be able to afford, and then go ahead and be able to make a decision that you're gonna feel confident about because these numbers are gonna translate into buying a home. That's gonna be a really big part of your finances, and it's going to be where you actually live your life. So you wanna be sure that it's something that makes you happy. I'm Kate Wood and I write about mortgages and home buying for NerdWallet. When you're trying to figure out how much home you can afford, the level of down payment you can make is a big variable. We have an entire video that is just about determining your down payment. So while you're on this channel, check it out. And if you learned something today, hit like and subscribe.